at the Finance and Economic Development Committee meeting for Tuesday, February 8th. And President myself and Jonathan Smith, Tim McCarthy's absent. We have Finance Director Amber Rathburn, Deputy Finance Director Kayla Trego, and City Administrator Bridget Cabot here present. Our first item is to approve the mo uh, prior month's minutes. I have no and, objections. Okay, no objections here, so go on with those. And our guest speaker tonight is Nathan Summers. <laughs> you're up, you're up, Nathan, on uh, number two. You're going to say the S3 uh, contract for IT. And, and talk to me like I'm a fifth grader. Here. Okay, I'll talk you through it. Talk to me like you don't know anything about IT. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is an agreement with um, Esri. Um, Esri is the industry leader in GIS software. Um, and Perrysburg has been using Esri software. I've been here just shy of six years, and they started a couple years before that. Um, and it's primarily been through individual uh, licenses. So as, as we're growing, we have more and more people that use GIS tools. Um, it's used in every division, um, maybe except for finance. <laughs> Not a lot of applications for it there. Um, so it's, it's used throughout the city um, for management purposes, for disaster planning. Um, we use it every year um, with analyzing fire runs, police runs, EMS runs. Um, there's a, a wide array of applications for it. Um, really why this got started is I was looking at using, it's called Network Analyst. Um, so this is primarily going to be used at public utilities uh, because we have right now an inventory of all of our water, stormwater, and sanitary lines. Mm -hmm. So where they go, how they interact with one another. But what Network Analyst does is it lets you build on that. It lets you model flow. So if somebody were to dump a can of paint in a storm drain, where down the line does that go? So they need tools to be able to, to map that. And while they have some rudimentary version of that now, a component of this agreement gives us access to that piece of uh, software in addition to others. Um, so that's what started this, uh, was the network analyst. And then another thing that we've been looking at is a work order or asset management system. Um, any of the big players use underlying um, ESRI licenses. So in addition to paying um, anywhere from twenty to forty thousand dollars a year for a work order solution. You have to pay five hundred dollars for a user license. So at public utilities, for example, they'd have to have licenses for the billing clerks, for the people in the office, and the people out in the field. All individual licenses. With this agreement, though, it gives you um, fifty licenses that we can use, in addition to all of the other software components that are included in it. So, in order. Um, it's not only like a cost, a cost saving measure. If you look at it just for the licenses, um, it more than pays for itself that way. But if you also look at all of the other um, software components that are in here, it's a big benefit to us in IT. Um, since we've moved to Amazon Web Services to host all of our GIS, right now we have everything in a, a production environment. So there's no real way without taking the system down in order for me to do upgrades or to, you know, to test things. Uh, and this agreement is additional licenses for the server components, so I can have backup servers that not only I can test and do upgrades on, but I can also help alleviate traffic uh, to speed up our GIS in times of heavy use. So if there's ever, you know, like a water boil advisory, we put out maps showing, you know, everybody in this zone, you have to boil your water for whatever reason, People are going to come to the website, which would then direct them to a uh, web map. Um, and then in times of heavy use, like any website, those things can get bogged down. So having backup servers in place in order to help reroute that traffic um, is really vital for emergency planning. Um, that's sort of the gist of it. There's a ton of licenses, a ton of software that we're entitled to in this agreement. Um, and the way that uh, Dave, uh, David Smith, who's our account manager at Esri, has proposed this initial agreement is sort of a, a build-up plan. So we're obviously not going to take advantage of everything on day one because 
this is some of these things will take years to implement. Uh, so he's done a, a ramp up pricing model for us in order to take advantage of the fact that you know we're not going to use all 50 licenses on day one. We're not going to use every software component on day one. But eventually in that third year, we'll be more invested in it and so we'll be able to take full advantage of the uh, enterprise agreement. So that's the idea behind the pricing. This is a three-year price, it's 67. It's a three, yeah, it's a three-year agreement. They don't offer one year. Um, okay. So it, it's broken down per year pricing, but it is a three-year agreement. And you said we've been, we've been using this, uh, we've had these type of uh, services for six years now, right? At least, yeah. With other, but never with Esri, right? Other companies? No, it is, it, it's all with Esri. Oh, Esri, and, uh, so and we, okay. We have like, um, there's different levels of licenses, and a lot of them are viewer licenses, so people can look at stuff, but they can't make edits to the data. Like me, like Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, like Lauren Rush, for example, the stormwater yes. coordinator, mm -hmm. she uses GIS a lot. She can look at it. Actually, she has one of the creator licenses, so maybe a bad example, but she can look at and edit the data if she needs to, um, but if there's anybody else that notices, you know, things that need to be updated or when new subdivisions get built, I have to be the one to either uh, to go out there and, and map all the above ground stuff and then come back to the office and sit there and draw everything in. So oh. by giving the people that are already out in the field, either doing the installations, um, doing the checks, the ability to edit the data, they can, while they're out there with their iPads and their, um, we use Trimble R1 GPS receivers just for better accuracy mm -hmm. than what you can get on like your iPad or your um, iPhone. There's a handful of those already out at public utilities and public service. So while they're out in the field, they can go ahead and at least take the above ground points for me, fill out whatever information they know, because they know the system better than I ever will. Um, and then they can go back to their office with these new licensing models. They have access to the same software that I do, and then they can go ahead and make the edits themselves instead of waiting for me to get around to it or you know waiting until I get as built, because that's how it works right now is I, I get the as built. And then sort of after the fact, you know, six months after the fact, I go in and draw their stuff in, um, which really is not a um, good way of doing it because it's not current. The system's always out of date this way uh, just because I have no way of giving them access to be able to, in real time, capture these changes. Okay. And the, the same thing goes if, if there ever, like if there's a, uh, like a water break um, and they have to replace something in the field, I can't capture that in real time. Um, they're out there with their iPads looking at where these lines are in the ground. And so then they can go, hey, at this point, we had to put in, um, you know, a new joint. Oh, whatever. that gets entered in, in the system right there, right, as they're doing Yeah, like oh, I could, I could It should, but it's not right now. I'm sorry? It should be entered in when they're doing it, but it's not right now. It should now. be, yes. And that, that's the goal with this and, and going forward is to get it to a more real-time situation mm -hmm. so that if they're out, you know, driving, doing fire hydrant exercises and, like, I missed one, they can just directly, while they're out there, capture that uh, capture that um, point, enter all the information, and then the systems the systems just better all around for it. How does this how does this cost compared to the, the years past? Um, in years past, we pay shy of nine thousand dollars. Oh, for one? No, we have two um, two software licenses with that. That gives me my one server license, and then included in that is five named user accounts. And that, but as an annual cost, at nine thousand. Yes. Okay. But that that would go away under this new agreement. Yes, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some planning and zoning can use as well. Planning and zoning use GIS. Mm -hmm. um, there, the planning and zoning map is a GIS based yeah. management. Okay. Um, they can use it for inspections, they can use it for planning. Um, there's an entire thing that Esri publishes called GIS Solutions, which is saying, hey, these are all the things that you can do with our software. Um, and it's, they've, they've brought in examples of it. It's, it's, it's like a, it's a huge poster mm -hmm. if you were to like list everything. So fire, there's, there's, fire and police, uh, there's, there's applications for yeah, them as well. Yeah. Police services in their CAD. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what I use to do all the reporting on for police, fire, EMS runs. Right. Um, wow, that yeah. sounds 
engineering has it, like I said, public service, public utilities, um, law and administration use it for some annexation stuff. Um, that, that's tied into like the planning and zoning thing, but there's a layer on there of all the annexations so that they, they can just click on the annexation, see the description, see the map, um, instead of going and pulling the file. If they need the whole file, they can they know where to reference it, but mm -hmm. just for quick access information. I guess for the future, it's no more, hey, we need to go see Nathan to get this stuff. Yeah, pretty much. And, uh, yeah. I, I, I know I hear your name all the time when we talk <laughs> about the zoning maps. And yeah. Like, well, yeah. We're gonna go talk to Nathan and make sure this is right. Yeah. Can you call Nathan to? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we should be able to get that done real time. Yeah, yeah. It, it just gives people the ability to do the work that they can do themselves. So the only question that I have is um, what, I know we had a contract with, uh, how do you, is it Esri? Esri, yeah. Esri. Um, is there a reason that they were selected again? Or do we look at any, is there anyone else that's better? Or, I mean, or, and you're, I don't want to say better, that's a loaded question there. Um, is there other companies that do this and what led you to Esri over at these other companies? There really is nobody else. Okay. There's a, a free solution that a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people use called QGIS but it's not an enterprise system. It's, it's really for like somebody that wants to do GIS at home. Um, but Esri, as far as I know, there's nobody else that does this. We could go through like a third party reseller or like an Esri partner to buy their product. But it would still be them. But it's, it's still Esri, okay. yeah. That's the only question, I wanna see if we're. It, yeah, there, I mean, there really is. Ever since, like Esri's been around since I think the 80s. And, and even then, they they sort of built this entire industry, um, and they've always. Well, the eighties isn't that long ago, so it's not that. that because <laughs> <laughs> you were born and, in the middle of the eighties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, my kids mentioned something. About, oh, that was a song in high school. The response: Well, that was my really old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah. you explained that very well. I might not even have to call you back for some more. <laughs> yeah, if there's any other questions, let me know. But okay. Um, yeah, that's really the really the gist of it. Sounds good. So, well, thank you. Uh, are you um, in favor of this? And, with so well, the two zero will be uh, moving that forward. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Let's move right along. Banking depositor. What's the depository agreement? That's you're going to talk about that, Amber. I do. Item. Every five years, the Ohio Revised Code requires that we go out and bid our banking services. Um, so Kayla and I sent out letters to every bank that has a branch in Perrysburg. And we also put it uh, two weeks in the Messenger Journal to advertise. We received four bids back. Mm -hmm. um, we got one from Fifth Third, Huntington, Waterford, in the state bank. And we analyzed all of the bids that we got back and determined that Huntington, who we are currently with, um, makes the best sense to stay with them. They did have the lowest fees. We're happy with their service. Um, we've been with them for what I could see at least 15 years. And like I said, happy with their service. Their fees were low. Um, and some of the things that we did look at um, actually going forward, we want to be able to pay items ACH. Right now, we still cut checks for 99% of our invoices. Um, and Huntington's fee for that was lower than the other ones. So that's another good reason to stay with them. Yeah, I, I looked it all over, and then plus I did have a, a discussion with you privately on right. um, it. It definitely makes sense to me to stick with them. So just confirm they had the lowest fees overall from everyone that that's the reason. That's the, yeah, that's that, the reason. I just want to make sure that this is not just the service, but making sure it's not going to cost. It. it worked out nice then. Yeah. It worked out nice that they did have the lowest fees, but she said we're not required to take the lowest one. Yeah. Um, but it just turned out that way. So that that's that's a plus for us. Exactly. I agree. I have no objections. Um, neither do I. We'll move that forward. Thank you. All righty. So um, the budget amendment. Uh, I know we, we discussed some of it uh, last month, actually just about everything, and I've, I've gone through the list quite a bit with, with Amber, too. 
Do you have uh, anything else you want to talk about in the budget amendment, Jonathan? Pull it up here, actually. I apologize. I realize it's not on the legislative email. One moment here. There's a copy in your packet. Oh, is there? Okay. Probably yeah. yeah. halfway through. Because there really wasn't too many, many big changes in this budget amendment from what I recall when I was looking over that. Um, I know that one of the things we had talked about was talking about the, the ARPA funds as well. So I, I, I'm more than happy to talk about that too once we get to that. Right. Yeah, I was going to ask about that next. Yeah, I don't think there's really any big questions here. It's all... Every number we see here, we did confirm today that every number we see here is in addition to what what we saw in our budget, right. Right. As, a, as opposed to replacing. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, Amber and I have come up with a, a new system that we put into place to not have as many uh, items in the amended budget, all those carryovers, we're trying to reduce those to a minimum by changing the way we do our year end with our departments so that we're giving them a definite cut off date in which to get things in comfort uh, to the best of their ability so that we don't have all those carryover projects. We're trying to minimize those as much as possible. Was there any big changes in the budget for the uh, on the income side from what was budgeted uh, no, from here? I don't think so. No, we left that pretty much the same. Okay. Another one, I think we might have been talking about tweaking maybe up to 25000 was the wholesale most of tax. Um, but I think we, we were still looking at it at the time I think, we had that discussion. Right. I don't, I thought with um, COVID that we still weren't. Not sure, weren't sure, so didn't want to budget higher and, and not hit that mark. Okay. Then the fact that OI is not that, that their corporate office is a, I don't know, quite a bit of person with the public is very much true. Right. And, that, and they're not going to be back at all this year for their preferred. They're worldwide visitors and, and guests coming to the, the facility so that we could drive up some of those on tax. So yeah, that was our other. We weren't really all that comfortable when we were looking at that. And I see that we have the uh, increase for the Wednesday at Woodlands. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that's taking us all the way through August. Yes, that's the add four more mm -hmm. confidence. Uh, anything else that uh, should be pointed out or discussed that um, the administration? Some of the biggest changes are probably, uh, I'll say, in the middle section where you see the words vacation sit down, mm -hmm. 27 pay fund. Um, these are dollars that we're asking to allocate to those new funds that council uh, through this committee approved. I don't know if it was last meeting or the meeting before. I can't remember. It was in January. January's yep. meeting. To allow us to start setting aside funds for general fund funded employees for payouts upon termination or retirement or vacation sit uh, comp time, as well as putting money aside for the 27th day that happens every year of the year. Uh, that just happened in 2020. So we're looking to budget essentially one tenth of that, uh, what we think will be that payout on that 27th day, one tenth of that each year for the next uh, 10 years. So when that pay comes, when that 27th pay is, the money will already, already be set aside for that. Those are probably the biggest changes. Um, so the budget, the first, the first portion, almost all of those are items that were either requested in the original budget process by departments that we mentioned to you through the budget process or the balance of budget that we needed to move those to the amended budget, uh, as well as there is, I think, one or two I'll call carryover items um, that we did not get any comfort prior to the end of the year, or is the Orleans Park parking lot, the Rotary Park parking lot, uh, we thought we would have those funds in cover, but it didn't make, make it through the uh, bidding and awarding process in time. So those are coming back into this budget amendment. So the, the, I know the refuse truck is on here. This is a related question, but not anything to do with the refuse truck. Um, uh, the cost of recycling materials. Have we, I, I'm not on service anymore to ask the question, and it's I'm just curious. I just asked Ron Ross today if he could give me an update uh, via G David on what our recycling numbers look like. Uh, and in particular, the glass recycling, I was interested to see how that program's going to go on. So when I have those numbers, I'll forward 
It would be great to send all the council to let us know as well, especially if there's anything that's being turned away on the recycling side. Uh, and again, I just want to give credit to the service department as well for the stickers on the, the trash. Uh, you'll see me in the at night trying to look through it. And my, one, it shows me at night because the blue and the gray, you can't differentiate the color when it's dark. So that sells me. Glow in the dark. Yeah. I need something on there because it's uh, it, it helps me. <laughs> so so you you don't just put them back in the same place every I, I time. I do, but I they forget. Get okay. <laughs> All right. I always know my recycles on the left. Everybody. Knows. And there, there's every now and then where you accidentally forget and you put it in the wrong order. <laughs> oh sure. And then I'm looking at did I do it right this time? I can't tell from the color. So looking at the top reminds me. All right, I got the right one. And then I've, I've still thrown in the wrong one, but that's another conversation <laughs> for another time. Okay. <laughs> All right, the ARPA, how you want to, is there anything on that, Jonathan? That, uh... Well, I know it's, I... Yeah, I did uh, print out the sheet that I sent to council. Yeah, that's the one that That's something that would be what we just passed at the last meeting with the safer uh, walk. Uh, the safe route to school. Yes, thank you. That this is something that could be utilized for that as well. We can Correct. apply for grant funding. The, once that happens and we get the results of that, um, if it didn't face any upgrades at crossings, we could use those dollars for those specific ones on those school routes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I just know uh, for, I know, Mark, you're out probably as much as I am all around town. Yes. But, how nice it would be to have the things, especially around uh, high traffic areas. Uh, honestly, I think one of the big ones is right there by, um, it, just as a reminder, I know I always get on my tangents with these things, so I apologize, but uh, uh, right there by Mr. Freeze is a big one. Yes. Um, right there by uh, Oh Deer Diner is another one. Um, just because, you know, Fifth and Oh Deer, uh, or Fifth and Louisiana, sorry. Yes. And uh, West South Boundary there is, there's a lot of neighborhoods there that with kids that want to cross. Oh yeah, Fifth and Louisiana, especially with all the events that happened across the yeah. street from them. And, yeah, I mean, that is a hot corner, and for schools. bicycles as well. Yeah, and I know that there's a and as we're talking about the multi-use path that's going to go along Fort Meigs Road, and hopefully connect um, along 65 there Correct. to cross over at, by Northridge. Yes, north and south. Yeah, yeah. North to have another indicator there i know it's it's going to be harder for people to slow down with how fast that is but uh, at least let people know that they should be aware that someone's trying to cross so, so yeah, i think we have a lot of opportunities and then under the other suggestions um i think we still have in there additional uh, looking at additional upgrades to crossings and some of it's going to depend on what who's got with that school travel plan mm -hmm. and i think that'll give a, a good indication Um, Bridget, I had talked to you about I, um, the LED street lights for the Rochden MUP. Yes. At that, uh, they're probably going to go on every uh, other existing pole. Uh, that is that is what we are talking That's about right a, now. Every mm -hmm. every other existing pole from the tracks, uh, CSX crossing, mm -hmm. um, Rochden West to HPI. HPI, right? And, um, because that's a very dark dark road. What about the Fort Megs 
uh, MUP there that we're going to put. A, is there lighting there? There's street lighting on the opposite side of the road. There is street lighting there now. Um, I, I don't know how dark you run that. How dark is that? Run that way at night, yes. Because it could be on the west side, yes. So there are there are utility poles on the east side. Uh, how many there are? I know that we have that mapped out uh, on a on a GIS map. Yeah, I was just gonna say your GIS thing would tell me where the street lights are at. Um, Look at that, we're getting our money's worth already. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's gonna be Nathan's here, so we don't have to say we'll reach out to Nathan and get that information back. Yeah, well, what we can do is once that's installed and we understand what what kind of lights spill over across the road and what doesn't. Uh -huh. We can also work with Edison on it. You can change out the light to a different type of fixture, add more if there's more poles that don't have lighting on it. But being cognizant of not having light pollution or spillage too much so that it's going into the back of the houses on the west side or the front doors on, on the east side. Yeah, that, that's what I was wondering if if that anything underground would need to go in during this con, uh, construction. Um, there is if we went with any kind of lower lighting. Along the multi-use path on that side, so maybe that little bollard. Yeah, bollards is what I was thinking. Like that's then you don't you're not bothering the neighbors and the path gets lit. I think that's something we ought to think about um, while that's tore up. That and um, ask Brian to check in with the consultant permit. I think that's something that's worth looking at. Yeah, that that would be something that we could look at. Well, they're doing the ADA. Well, even if it's just a conduit this time, we can always, you know, years future, we can, then we got the well, conduit there. Along the uh, multi-use path that goes into Riverside Park, we put a conduit in there. Oh, oh, great. We're doing that. We should probably think about doing that everywhere we put a multi-use path. That's okay. Anything else on the ARPA, you think? Uh, no, I'll, I'll have some more conversations at the recreation community. So. Okay. Excellent. So I'll save those for the next one. All right. Um, you're still here. Are you want you want Kayla to take it or? Oh, we're good. Okay. <laughs> Any questions on the five yeah. thousand dollar and higher expenditure? Couple easy ones okay. here. Um, yeah, we just talked about fishback and, and the designs on the twelve thousand dollars for the designs. Um, are we have we seen any of those? Are we, we don't able to see any of those designs yet? The results of their of uh, their survey, mm -hmm. and they've given us um, several several uh, plan sheets that have a picture of each building with mm -hmm. a corresponding dot on this map to indicate whether it's um, whether the issue is like less than an inch, if the issue is between like an inch and three inches, if it's between you know if it's like a six inch step issues so they've kind of mapped out where the most troubled spots are and then they've given us some ideas on how uh, what they could design so in terms of what an overall design would look like yeah um but they're working with the engineer right now and now that they know uh, what options we are not a fan of at all they're going to go back and take the option we are comfortable with and then start working on actual designs great okay yeah i mean i can't wait to see some of what they come up with. Because I know some of those can be very challenging. Yes. <laughs> um, and we talked with the Ability Center, and we went through that document with them, and they understand we're going to do what's within our, our power to do, and, yeah. and maybe one or two areas that, are, that have, like, on either side of them, have no problem whatsoever, mm -hmm. but that one is, like, a, a, a stage three issue. Right. That may not be able to be figured out. But we can only do what we can do, good. right? Trying to check them all out. Good deal. Um, uh, way down here, almost towards the end. Uh, there's eighteen thousand dollars of TSI. Just remind me what that is. A port port account pro fit tester. I'm not sure. I forgot what what department that's part of. That's the fire. No, that's okay. All right. I think that's to fit their face masks. That oh, oxygen. got it. Perfect. I think that was shown to me when I was I visited the fire station. Now that. Okay, and um, Cron Liebing Company. Uh, what is the uh, DR solid state level controller? Uh, those are dust controllers for a pump station. Oh, okay. I think it might be, I think it might be the, uh, the 
Um, that might be the eastbound grid compensation. East, okay. I just in, in the original 2022 budget, there was uh, new controls for both the eastbound grid compensation and I think the growth haven compensation. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I just, yeah, remember when you had some trouble with some uh, initials the other day. Now, no, I, yeah. once I figure out what the uh, acronyms are, yeah, the PS, I should have known it's pump station. So, all right, that's all. I just fortunately, that's well, now in the record. <laughs> I'll never forget it either. <laughs> all right, that's that's all I have on that. Uh, credit cards, I looked through and uh, I, I didn't see anything uh, question on any credit cards. So, uh, any are you good with it? Yeah, I, I don't think I have uh, really any question from looking through everything on there. All right. Health insurance? Health insurance. We are pretty steady, which is good. Um, about the same as we were at the end of December, we're at $274,000 in that fund. End of December, two seventy-five. dollars um, No surprises there. We did increase um, premiums for employees, so that also increased um, the city's portion. So you'll see that in there. Um, but it's good that that is holding at that amount. Yeah. Was the percentage increase overall out of curiosity today? I know what it was for other areas. And oh, about eighteen percent. Yeah, it was. It was one of our larger increases in the last few years. Yeah, they've been definitely going up, and it's not fun. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But the balance is pretty much the same. Uh, Right there. Yep. Yeah. So we'll continue Wonderful. to watch the trends. All right. Good with that, John? Well, Amber, we're. Told you I'd be good for a six <laughs> All right. In other, other business, somehow this gender neutral uh, ordinance followed me into finance uh, when we first talked about it when I was on personnel. Uh, so um, I don't know. Are you you're familiar with uh, okay the way that uh, trying to find the trying no, to find I'm, I'm looking the it up here too, and I want to um, start. Oh, I got it. There you go. Um, well, the, the one that we passed uh, five dash twenty twenty two, you know, section one. Um, you know, it was, came to my attention by a couple different sources that that first line that says the city of Perrysburg codified ordinances are hereby amended to read. You know, all references to he and she are amended to they and all reference to his and her are amended to their. Although we all know what the intent of this is, but it reads like we just changed all of our cod codified ordinances to read that. And um, that was pointed out to us. So it didn't look like it took a whole lot for Kate to do some some digging and, and find out the ORC and um, she kind of re, reworked it where we can repeal that and and pass the, another one. Is that is that accurate, Bridget? What we're yes, my understanding is that uh, we received a communication from a law firm who expressed some concern about a, a wholesale change where they thought that some of the intents um, may have been changed as well. And he explained to the, uh, the individual in question that the URC permits this. In fact, there's I mean, section 1.31 of the Ohio Revised Code uh, talks about using general neutral language. Uh, so what she did is she was trying to further clarify counsel's intent by adding the words gender neutral and gender specific and kind of defining those to make sure that uh, we were making a wholesale change on the intent of all codified workers. And, and grammatically, it, it and it allows for the codifier to make grammatical changes based on like the context. It sounds like of the codified ordinance language on a case by case basis to make sure it makes sense. And the email I got today said that we will have, we will be able to prove all those changes. Um, what she said, once or twice a year, we'll look at them. Uh, yes, I believe we get 
You kind of buy the updates twice a year. Twice a year. So, um, I mean, I don't know how many it's going to amount to, but it, it, may not amount to any. it may not amount to very many at all, but, um, or it does. But you, was, uh, did you get? You probably didn't get this. I latest. did not get that latest email. Okay, um, I I can share that. But she did make it very clear that. Because I can share that that I believe that everyone in council read the ordinance. However, uh, we took it for what the change was going to be and didn't read it in the literal sense of the that was brought to our attention. Uh, the only question that I have on here is um, in. 202.03 in the rules of construction it does mention within the ordinance it says itself that uh, mm -hmm. and and it's specifically b2 it says words of one gender uh, include the other genders Correct. is this something that if we're actually going through a gender neutral change within the ordinance that that is something that is redundant and should be removed my brief conversation with the law director on this and then i think actually our police chief might have been sitting there um, I have an, this was after I think council had passed the last ordinance and she had received this communication from this outside law firm and I ran it up to codified ordinances and I'm like I'm pretty sure there's already something in there that, that describes this so that is something I can go back and have her look at to make sure that you're not duplicating language or do we need to remove one section and replace it with another section um, because I, I do believe that that language is already in there. Yeah, because there is inside under the 202.03, it says the singular and plural gender tense, and it specifically says words of one gender include the other genders. Yes. Um, and then words in the present tense include the future, and then the, the singular includes the plural. So the it, plural it, it, it covered a lot of the basis already, even though if you're looking at it literally at the time, it, I, I understood the the intent because I didn't realize um, that we had that necessarily in there either uh, until I went through and, and really dug into it. Um, so I'm I'm curious if we might be making a change that uh, uh, we might need to make another change again <laughs> is the best way to put it. I will ask her to review the new draft proposal for this in addition to 202.03b to make sure that something else does not, either doesn't need to be done or that it doesn't, that we need to modify something else. Okay. Or amend something else for rules of construction. But our code clearly states it and the IRS code clearly allows a jurisdiction to make those definitions and changes. I don't have an issue with the changes. I just don't want us to be done in, in making multiple changes over and over again for something we may not need to. No sense to adding more work if we don't have to. Fair enough, I'll pass it up. So, um, what would, do we want to move this on so we can vote on it Tuesday or wait and get those answers or pending those answers? I'll take your lead on that one. I, okay. I don't know if I'm ready to make any determination until I get some of the answers. So we could move it forward with no action from the committee, just for further discussion with the committee as a whole, or council as a whole, I should say. Okay. I can certainly ask the law director to, um, if you'd like to come back to the finance committee next month with further clarification between what's a 202.03b versus the ordinance that passed at the last council meeting and this proposed amendment, we can, we can certainly do that. 202, can you tell me that? 202.03 uh, rule, rules of construction. Okay. I, mean, I guess the only concern is since we passed it too, I don't want some, the, uh, uh, we only submit those what, once every six months you said? Um, we receive, we send, I don't think we send them out in batches, okay. like on a monthly basis. I'm not sure how Dave used to do it versus how Amber's doing it. But I know that we would have the opportunity um, where they would send back to us twice a year changes. Okay. Well, then the way this is, if this was in here, we never had to do anything at all. Didn't this cover it? From the That's beginning? the way I, I read that. And if we're making a change yeah. just so that way no one wants to try to come to say that it needs to be changed in the future, I, I can understand that. 
but at that point there's no need to have that language in there. Mm -hmm. So well, I think if I understand you right, you're, you're saying we could repeal 5-2022 and not pass anything else. From if I'm yeah. looking at this, yeah. I, I uh, see that. The way I'm seeing it too, I mean, one gender includes the other genders. Um, yeah, this is just, we might be just adding a lot of work to ourselves for nothing. Is it present tense? All right. Well, then you'll find that and we'll. All right. Mm -hmm. But I'm not worried about the way that, I mean, the immediate time right now, the way that we, we, we all I voted that on that with the intent. We're, in we're not in any violation now. Okay. The uh, right. only concern I had is that the literal wording did make it appear that we changed the entire code, too. Yes, that's what I'm talking yeah. about, that first line in Section 1. That it, um, hopefully we can maybe get an answer before Tuesday, and, and if it's something that we can address at the mm -hmm. council meeting Tuesday. Under other business possible? Well, we could do it under the financial oh, report if we, if we have some answers that we want to bring into council at that point. Yes, and but even so, we could still repeal... 5-2022 yeah. and be back to the way we were right here and still be completely covered. That's the way I, I okay. take that. Okay, let's, yeah, maybe Kate will give us an answer by then. We All right. That. I, and I think, and it depends on what the intent was of, of the committee and council. Because um, even though the school's construction say this, we have a variety, a whole list of places where it just says either he, sometimes it says he or she. So I don't know if it was looking to make that uniform so it's either always he or she, or it's always they. Uh, I think that's that was the sense that I got from the personnel committee conversation that happened, is to remove those instances where it only said he. Um, even though 202.03 indicates that it's either or. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just for those folks that are doing plain reading of it. And not yeah, we're trying to know. make it, and that's, I think that's when we first caught it. Yeah. We, it was just looking through the, the titles of department heads and it always said he. It always did say he, and then we have so many yeah, she's well, in our department it heads now. It really doesn't matter. I think that that, but yeah, I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. the the intent was in the right spot, but uh, we, I'm wondering if we're doing more work than we need to. And we're giving more work to the publishing company to do changes that we may not need to do. I will review that and have Back to the council. I would, if I can ask one other question too, when we send these out to the to have these published and to to correct in the ordinance, is there additional cost um, for each individual I one? Think or pay a flat fee. okay, so there's not if they well, had to go and do more work that, from one ordinance. That's not to say that the contract contract fee for the following year would be based on how much work you gave on the prior year. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not sure on that. But I think it's been pretty consistent over time in terms of what that contract rate has been. As it, I think it's gone up very, very yeah. incrementally, very small. So it doesn't matter the, the amount of, I don't, I don't want to say it doesn't matter. There's there's probably a matter and in maybe there. And we can look at that because last year was kind of a banner year in the personnel uh, section of the code. We made uh, 20 or 30 changes just in that section of the code alone. And I think I remember voting for those in just one meeting. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a little bit more work to go on that. But we can certainly I can work with Amber and get with the work with Amber mm -hmm. to see what the last couple of years contract rates have done. And see if they're increasing. Okay. I'd be curious to know, too, if they charge anything for. I don't believe it's like a, a, a piece, you know, you know, piece rate for, I'm pretty sure it's just one flat fee. Okay. All right. All right. I have nothing else. If you don't. I have nothing. Okay. We'll be adjourned then. Thank you. Thanks for all the explanations to it. Thanks, Nathan.